So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, because we have a conversation uh, about this all the time, is um, the spiritual other world. Yeah. Uh, the idea that, you know, the world that we live in isn't all that exists. There is more to the world. You got red pill to this pretty early. Like, yeah. You know, you would have gone back and forth maybe between believing and not believing and being certain yeah. and being not so certain. Being critical about it and just being like, oh, is it? I don't know. Yeah. I was very black and white for, and I knew like people did weird shit because they believed it. But then when I started, when you start showing me all the, like the fucking. What was it like the free like, rituals people do outside big research facilities like the CERN one we saw on uh, TikTok them doing dancing was it the Sheba statue that, doing yeah, that Sheba, around there yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Freemasonry talk about that what they do and what they believe I was like the, I first thought that's fucked up maybe I was like I'm not really sure about demons now I was like maybe they believe it and they just do it because they believe it yeah, the talking cat. about all of this crazy, weird, yeah. occult practices, <laughs> spiritual, the, the wild wackiness, side of the world. you know, all of these things that people are engaging in that normal people yeah. don't even think about or know about or believe could be true. But this is all fucking going on. There's yeah. people at parties with masks, there's people doing blood rituals and sacrifices, there's all of this crazy shit that you never know about. And then when you start digging into it, the rabbit hole just yeah, goes deeper, deeper than and deeper. anyone. Yeah. Could even imagine. I think what started t shifting my uh, view on it was stuff like you know the um, Epstein case. Everyone knew about it. He was a paedophile trafficking kids to his island, and I saw about that. But then I started seeing more into it, like popping up on like, my four you and stuff like that, about how they had little chambers and they would drink children's blood and shit. And I was like, why would you? Why would you? I started looking into that, and I was like. So people are actually doing this. What were the experiences that you had early on that would give you the idea that, you know, there might be something that's a little bit deeper than the world sort of makes up? I had just one memory, a faint memory of being in just a white room, like bright white room, kind of like you see in a movie, you know, when someone's like died or now like in a weird kind of sci-fi kind of alien room. It was all bright white and I remember there being a doorway that was pitch black on the other side, couldn't see anything. And there was some sort of figure, like a man, standing there in a suit. Just standing there looking at me, but he had no kind of face, I can't remember the face, I had like no facial feature. It's kind of like, I just can't see the face. And all I remember is this guy just looking at me, shaking his head, turning around, walking back to nothing. And then me being awake. And I think at that point, I was always kind of open-minded, I looked into it, but I always dismissed it, you know, spirituality and all this stuff. But I think at that point, that always kind of left some sort of impact me, I could never quite shake it off. And I think that slowly and over events started leading to me being more open to it, slowly. And I think it's the past few years, talking to you, seeing these videos, has really kind of seen that there's a dark side of this, and all this fucked up stuff happens, and they realise, well, maybe there was that made me, well, not realise, but it's kind of strengthened what I thought. Maybe there was something to that. Maybe what I had then did have meaning, and it wasn't just a hallucination or a random memory. Yeah. But, uh, yes, yeah, it just opens the door. It opens a lot of questions, if this is true, to what is, you know, what is reality. And that's, that's metaphysics. Yeah. That exact question is, what is the nature of reality? Yeah. You know, is this world real? Is what we perceive really there? Uh, are we real? What is the nature of reality? They're all what yeah. you call metaphysical questions. And metaphysics is a wellspring of incredible ideas. A lot of these concepts, you realise, they throw in your face in movies a lot as well. Like, I remember a while ago, I was trying to talk, pitch you to, you know, the, it's not great for, uh, honestly, it's, compared to Marvel, people say it's great, but I think the story is great for the deep kind of shit they throw into, like the Marvel Eternals film, which okay. uses old biblical names and as the characters, you've got like Icarus, who flew too close to the sun, and all these kind of names, yeah. and their whole concept is that uh, they're uh, God, they'll be created by gods, these beings, to come down to Earth and what the uh, Earth and other planets, and protect the population as it grows, so that when it grows to a certain stage, the bodies fuel this creature inside that births another god, and then they all die, and then they'll come back to this god, yeah. and like they have all these memories of thousands of years, and then they'll erase their memory, 
take it to a new planet and store the memory in little storage things. Similar to like the concept where they say if you're now, me and you could be a spiritual entity, we only know our lives now, but when we die, we remember all our past lives and we kind of like look on them and then go to our next life, like the soul family, and it erases again your plan, like you're learning, like you said, it's a challenge for us yeah. to learn. It was similar to, it reminded me of that because they're kind of there for thousands of years and then when they go back, their memories take away stored as like yeah. knowledge of life and those and how it works and stuff. But then when they go back down to the next planet to help that cultivate, they're a new person, they have a new name, yeah. and they're a different identity, but they're still the same being. And it was kind of like that kind of concept was pretty wild. Even if it turns out that your school was right, yeah. and the metaphysical thesis that you began in is the correct one, and there is no higher realities, there's no higher meanings, there's, and there's nothing like that. If that's the truth, then do you know what? You imagined the most incredible things. Yeah. And you, you know, even if you didn't yeah. paint a picture of it, you experience these realities, and that is yeah. that is a beautiful odyssey of the mind. That otherwise yeah. you never would have, you know, you lived as if the spaghetti yeah. monster was true for a minute. Yeah. If your purpose was to believe and promote the spaghetti monster, then at least you had a purpose out of it. Yeah, I mean, even if it wasn't. We're going to go through a good thousand ideas, yeah. you know, and and the fact that we're going to do that is amazing you know we're seeking the truth but we're open to things that no one is open to and that means that we can send so many different beliefs so many ideas yeah. and you know be open to the idea that we could meet the true one in the end yeah each time your metaphysical thesis is expanding as you add in all of these different possibilities until you can just entertain fucking anything and and just look at things with eyes wide open yeah you know yeah it's beautiful Definitely. i love Definitely. pushing the boundaries of of um that box of yes. metaphysical parameters you know I think having, I think it's important to have conversations like these and have thoughts like these because it kind of, it can expand your kind of mind, your viewpoint. It kind of, in a way, it keeps your mind going, like, keeps you going, keeps you, not to say you can make you more intelligent, you can, rather than being a, no, like a, a 